Hello! I have no idea how this channel could have reached 500 or more than 500 subscribers and well I don't see any comments below my videos in any big number so I don't know who these 500 people are. Anyway, um, perhaps it's time to have my first unboxing video then. I recently started two projects on my own and uh, sent away the designs for the circuit boards to China to have them manufactured and they're back. Just to make clear, this video has not been sponsored by anyone. I'm not in it for any money. There's no monetization and uh, I don't have any Patreon or anything else. This is just uh, private projects which I want to show you here and even though I will mention that uh, the circuit boards were made by PCP GoGo because I really have good experience in the past with them, it's by no way that I had got anything from them. I paid almost a hundred, well including uh, the taxes afterwards, more than 100 euros for the boards so and for the transportation which was actually the major cost. So let's see what I got for my money. So this is a package. It arrived a couple of days ago already, but it has been lying here because I wanted to record this opening. So it came by DHL, Worldwide Express, um, to me here. And let's open it and see what's inside. And uh, here's a PCB ruler. I have a small collection of these already. Um, you could actually get it for free if you placed any order. So again, no endorsement. It's just a ruler. Let's have a look what we get here for our money. Well, the package didn't fare too well. I don't know if this was any inspection on the way which ripped it open I have no other idea what it could be so let's see what's inside two bags and that's it so these are my two designs I hope then this looks very promising looks exactly like what I ordered and uh, this is what this video will be about today but I also want to have a look already at the second part which will be part of another video and yeah these look pretty nice as well small pentagon circuit boards Yeah, castellated edges look very nice. Um, very first time I ordered these type of co side connectors as well. Um, these are one millimeter thick. As I said, these, these boards will be, and what this is about, will be covered in a different video soon. Put it somewhere where it's not in the way. <laughs> oh, wow. Match. And uh, well, let's have a look at this here and what it is. So it's a very weird shape of a circuit board. This is supposed to become a clock, which is actually a street clock in Berlin, which has fascinated me from my very first trip with my parents to Berlin, as far as I can remember um, in the, must have been still in the 1970s. Um, so, yes, let's unpack this package then. I can very well shrink wrapped onto a bubble backing. With all these uh, Chinese manufacturers, I actually don't know if they are all in the same building and uh, just have different names. Um, I've been ordering circuit boards for a couple of years by now. And uh, 
I started with some European manufacturers, but then I tried for the first time a Chinese one and I've stayed with them since. Looks nice. Here they printed their serial number, their own serial number. Um, I choose a white solder mask on this board in order to have some back reflection of the LEDs which will be mounted on these positions here. So for this clock, um, well I can show my prototype here of this clock which is here. So this is my prototype design using standard 3 millimeter LEDs which I put into a 3D printed holder and then soldered from the backside. And how this clock works is that we have minutes. So each of the LEDs down here is one minute. We can have one to zero as it is now. Now we have one um, up to four. Then we have LEDs which are worth five minutes each. So this is now 16 past. We have 5, 10, 15 plus 1 is 16 past. And then we have single digit hours, so 3. And then we have 5 hours here, which means that it's actually 23 uh, hours, 16 minutes. And that's probably what my computer tells me as well. Yes, so quarter past. 60 minutes past 11 in the evening and up here we have an LED which is blinking once per second. So how many LEDs do we have? We have 8, 12, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 24 LEDs in this setup. And in my previous video, I showed you how to connect two LEDs to a single GPIO pin. This is a different scheme. Here I have connected 24 LEDs to six GPIO pins. This one is running off an ESP8266, a Vimos D1 Mini clone or original, I have no idea. And uh, so I will show you how we can actually control these many LEDs with just six port lines. It's called Charlie Plexing. And the idea behind it looks as follows. If we have a single GPIO pin, we know that we can have a resistor and then a light emitting diode. And if we connect these to ground, then once we get a high on this pin, then we can get a current through the LED and the LED will light up. Nothing special. If we now take two GPIO pins, we actually can connect two LEDs in opposite directions between these two pins, which means we can connect them like so. GPIO number one, GPIO number two. And if both of these pins are high, no current will flow. If both of them are low, no current will flow. If GPIO one is high and GPIO two is low, we can have current through the left LED. And if GPIO two is high and one is low, we can have current through the right LED. Two pins, two LEDs. Nothing gained, nothing lost. What happens now if we take a third GPIO pin? We can connect 
another pair of anti-parallel LEDs between these two port pins and uh, this means now we have four LEDs on three port pins is it better I don't know but what we can do is we can also connect yet another pair of LEDs between these port pins. And now we have three pins and six LEDs. How can we control them? Well, if we disconnect GPIO3, connected as an input, then we can control these two LEDs as before. If we disconnect GPIO2, and if the voltage drop over two diodes in series is large enough, well, it, it will be large enough because we have a, another LED which is connected in parallel here, which will clamp the voltage um, accordingly. So if this pin is not here, we can control these two LEDs. And then without this pin, we can control these two LEDs. The concept is known as Charlie Plexing. And it was introduced by Maxim Electronics in the late 1980s, I think, or the early 1990s. I don't remember exactly. But it means that we can control n times n minus 1 LEDs with just n GPIO pins. So with three pins, we can control six LEDs, three times two. With four pins, we can control 12 LEDs. With five pins, we can control five by four is 20. And with six pins, we can control six times five, which is 30 LEDs. And in my design, I only use 24 of these. So let's have a look at the design itself and the circuit board. So I made the circuit board design, get rid of this one here, the circuit board design in KiCad. And uh, this is the schematic diagram. So I have my six GPIO lines here drawn out in a bus structure. And then I connected the LEDs between corresponding wires on this structure. Here you see a pair of antiparallel connected diodes. Um, diode 2 here, I can zoom in a bit. Diode 2 is connected between this and this wire and diode 3 is connected between this and this wire but in the opposite direction. Then we have a second pair here, we have another pair, we have another pair, we have another pair, another pair, another pair, another pair, another pair, another pair and this one here pairs with the first one up here and then we have two more of these pairs. And uh, then I wanted to have the same layout as the clock in Berlin. So I drew up a sketch after a photo of the clock. And uh, this is how it looks. And I did this in QCAT. It's also a, a free program. Actually, I paid for it. So this is a paid version. Um, but you can actually use the free edition for quite a lot. And uh, so here I made the cat drawing and exported is it as a DXF file. And this DXF file you can then import into the layout editor in KiCat. 
on the outline layer. So this is the yellow lines here are the imported DXF file and this is the edge cuts layer. So this is where the manufacturer of the circuit board will cut out the circuit board for you, hopefully. And they, they did it obviously. And then you can have a 3D view. So I placed all the LEDs and then I routed all the wires. And uh, so this is how it looks in the preview. And this is how it looks physically now as delivered. Okay. Um, I will briefly pause here and try to find a picture of the clock. Okay, here is the Wikipedia article about the Mengenlehre Uhr or the Berlin Uhr or Berlin clock. And this is how it looks in the real world. Here they have a short animation of it. And as you can see, well, they, they use obviously red LEDs up here and then the 15, 30 and 45 minute LEDs in the minutes here are also red. The rest is yellow LEDs. Um, and yeah, I think I will for, for this, I didn't do it on, on my first prototype, but now I will actually copy it directly. So let's get started and uh, solder the LEDs onto the board. For this I will use some surface mount LEDs, 0805s is the, what the design requires. I have here some unbranded SMD LEDs and I already have 11 red LEDs over here. Let's have a look what happened to the yellow 0805s. Where did they go? It says orange 0805, but I want to have yellow. Well, I have these strips here, but these are 0604 or 603s. This is 0603, this is 0603, 0603, 06. These are bigger. These are these are not. These are twelves. They were not. They should not be in here. But they should be in here. Yeah, I, I see it. It escaped into the wrong case. So here, uh, labeled according to color. Here it says yellow. So let's see how yellow they are. I have my. LED tester here, which can actually pinch through the plastic foil of these strips. And yeah, this is a nice strong yellow LED. Since it is a multiplex system, strong LEDs are preferable or intensive LEDs. So what did I say? I need four plus two, four, six, 8, 12 LEDs. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 LEDs. Oh, 13, 13, the top, the blinking one on the top, also yellow, like this. I will also no need the resistors, and as you can see here, we have now two resistors in series which each LED because we distribute them evenly onto the pins. And I actually on the board I reserved or I made place for parallel coupling resistors so that I could decrease the value by parallel coupling another resistor if my first guess 
is not good and the LEDs are too dim, uh, too bright, too dim, too dim. I can increase the current by parallel coupling another resistor. And so for the resistors, I think I will start with 100 ohms. And here I have a bag of 100 ohm 0805s. So with this, I think I have all the components. And uh, let's get into soldering. I will start by putting a dab of new fresh solder onto one pad of each LED. For this I will use my trusty TS100 soldering iron. My soldering station over there is currently not completely functioning. The upper one at least, the Hakko should be, but the Saike 898 is, has a broken soldering iron and currently I cannot film on my bench over there. That's why I actually it's crowded and cramped with stuff, but I have no camera over there as well. So let's do it here. And for the solder, I will use my favorite solder, which I have here, lead free, of course. Not this lead rubbish, which some YouTubers still prefer. And let's put a dab of fresh solder onto the right pads. For the lower row as well. And pads for the middle, they are rotated 90 degrees. Like this. I will also put some flux onto all of these. Kind of Rossmann style. Like this. And now I forgot which are the. These should be the red ones. Let's start with the red ones. Packaging. Oh, like this. Okay, so don't fly away, last one. Okay, caught them all. Ah, it's out here. So now, normally, I would go closer with my nose to actually be able to distinguish the cathode markings on these tiny specks of dust. Um, I will also bring up on my screen here the layout. Well, let's see. This is this is number six. Okay, so number six. Oh, now it's highlighted on this um, here as well. So this is the cathode. Um, so this is the cathode. Then the cathode is the right. So pin number one is the cathode. One cathode um, is here and anode there. Then we have in the next row, we have cathode, 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 cathode to the left, Ka, 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 Ka. Turn 
position back here. Then in the next row we should also have the cathodes. Yeah, I oriented those in the same way. Ka, 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 Ka. Then now it gets tricky because these are in order to have somewhat short wiring and possible wiring um, between the different pins or the LEDs I had to actually turn the LEDs in the design around and so we have actually we start with cathode on top anode below then we have anode cathode then we have anode cathode then we have cathode anode then we have anode cathode then we have cathode anode and now we are halfway on this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah so this is the point here and then comes anode cathode cathode anode anode cathode cathode and now let's have a look at the lowest row and then we have cathode to the left cathode anode cathode anode cathode anode cathode anode um of course this is marked on the board as well on the silk screen layer um so obviously the the i could have looked up that as well of course so on the silk screen the LEDs are marked like this, where this is the cathode side and this is the anode side. So trying to light it up again here. So the green markers are the cathodes. Just wanted to be sure here. So we have cathode marker like this and placing the first LED down up here. Then we have the cathodes to the left. Cathodes to the left. Yeah. 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 So, and uh, now let's try to fixate them. Need some. First, I have to wake up the soldering iron again and fix some new fresh solder on it. Like this. And let's start with the LEDs up here. Last one of the red ones. Like this. So now comes the yellow ones. Same procedure. Might be able to zoom down and show you how it looks. Let's have a look here. Perhaps I leave it in this position for now. So we have one LED here, one LED, one, one, and these. And this one, this one, and this one. And now we will fill up with the yellow LEDs, which I have here. And this one. So now all the LEDs are fixated on one side, and now all of them have to be soldered on the other side as well. So for this, I take the fresh solder wire here, a dab of fresh solder for each of them
Okay. So normally I would now expect them to be in place and functioning. Let's try to test them. So when I touch here in one polarity D20 is lighting up and uh, in the other polarity D1 is lighting up. So we have D20 anti-parallel to D1. We have here D3 and D2. We have nothing and nothing. Oh well, we, we have D5 lights up. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is this is a nice trick for <laughs> nice party trick. I test D4 and D5 lights up. I test D5 and D4 lights up. And this is just because they are anti-parallel and turned around. So if I move the my probe tips in the other direction and make contact here, now D5 lights up and now D4 lights up. <laughs> um, what we have here, here we have, we should have D6, yes, and we have D7, yes, so then we have D8, maybe, and we have D9. Now it's complicated, so if I probe here, then we have D11 and D10, as can. yes, we have D12, okay, and D13, can. we have D14, and D15, as can. we have D17, and D16, as can. we have D18, and D19, as can. and we have already seen we have D20, and D1, okay, as can. and then we have the D21, D22, D22, and the other direction is D21, and D23, and D24. So, yes, I will not clean up the flux residue for now, I leave it as it is. But I want to solder a pin header. So this goes here. Uh, should I? Yes, I should put uh, 100 ohm resistors on every second position back here first. So let's do that quickly. As before, I will. So on all the pins, like immediate one to hit transmitter. I then run on a 3.4 microwave, so 100 ohms should be probably okay value for these resistors. And since 2.9 series, I have 2 ohms in terms of these. And that should be us in non microwave. 10 milliamps to the IDs, 20, 24, 10 milliamps. So I don't need 6 of these resistors. These are many, these are 6. So that's a bag. And do I order them? Really? Why should I? Like 1 1 here. It's a magic case anyway. Yeah, I use too much flux now, yes, because I didn't consider that earlier. So whatever you say, comment. That's why it's cheap. Take it into consideration. Also, you don't have any wrong value, right? Like this. Okay, now we're going to set up solder. Like this. Yes. So now in with the pin header. I usually add solder to one of the pins in these constructions somewhere in the middle. Then I look from the side and push the header into a vertical position while at the same time heating the solder joint again. And then I solder the remaining pins. Should have trouble here with the pins which I attached. These are actually, yeah, for EMC purposes, I added a solder f or a, a copper fill on both sides. Um, I mean, these, these will be multiplexed. They will be running at uh, several hundred or a couple of thousand hertz actually, and might actually radiate some. So by actually adding Copper fill in between, I hope to mitigate possible EMC issues. 
On the other hand, it's not large kerns which are switched, so I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. So here it is, soldered all together. I didn't clean off the flux residue because I just want to have this as a quick test if everything works on the circuit board. So let's connect it up to an Arduino. I have an Arduino Nano here, which I will be using. And here we have the module with the LEDs. And now I have the pins down here. Uh, they are internally numbered one to six. And uh, I will just use a convenient to reach set of GPIO pins here. And let's start with pin number six, the highest one over here. And we go to pin number D2. Then we take number five to the neighboring D3. Then we take green cable here to go to D4. Then we have a yellow one going to D, is it five? Then we have the next one going to D6. And number one here, the last pin goes to D7. And uh, somewhere I have a USB cable here to connect to the Arduino. Seems to be a bit glitchy. Um, and now let's start a new project in Platform IO. 2022-04-18 Berlin Clock Nano, I call it. And I select a Nano, Arduino Nano with an 80 Mega 328 and the conventional old style bootloader, not the new bootloader. And Arduino Framework, I will not put it in my default location, I still haven't set the default location to where I want to store the files but it's not so difficult to just choose it here please wait okay let's wait do you trust the authors of the files in this folder I am the author of these files yes I trust me um, stupid question of course I trust myself and so we'll close some consoles down here like this so we are first presented with the platform io ini file for our project and uh, then under source we find the prepared arduino.h file which is our script file well, our source code file um, i will adapt the indentation to my own Preference and of course I take away the comments. We know what I said to go to into setup and loop. So let's uh, first declare some global variables here. And uh, one thing I want to declare here is the uh, an array with the pin numbers, the Arduino pin numbers, as they are um, related to the pins on the board here so i call it pins and i use an unsigned integer of eight bits for it pins we have six of them and these are now once again it's two three four five six seven Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All in sequence? Wow. Yes. All in sequence. Semicolon. And then I want to have a second array, which is actually 
telling us where the LEDs are connected. We have 24 LEDs and each of the LEDs has two connections, an anode and a cathode. So I define a, an array here, array of the LED connections where I will put the cathode with index 0 and anode with index 1. So let's fill up this array. And for this now I have to go to the KiCat schematic and that is here. So I can actually unmark this one. Can I? No. Yes, I can. So here we see how the individual LEDs are connected. The bus wires are corresponding to our pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So LED 1 here is connected with the cathode to number 6 and with the anode to number 1. So for the first LED that means I will have a 6,1 entry here. Not, not a semicolon. Comma is better. So let's go to the next row of LEDs. The LEDs 2, 3, 4 and 5 are connected with their cathodes to 2, anode 1, cathode 1, anode 2. What did I say? 2, 1, 1, 2. 2, 1. 1, 2. And 3, 1, 3. Uh, 1, 3. 3, 1, 1, 3. 3, 1, 1, 3. Then we have the next row, LEDs 6 to 9, and they are connected uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1, 4, 5, 1, 1, 5. So there goes the points here. This is the second LED, the second LED. These are the 5 hour LEDs, these are the 1 hour LEDs. Then comes the next row, and this is our long row here for the 5 minutes. So we have 11 LEDs from 10 to 20, and it's off by cathode on 4 and on 3, and it's 4, 3, 3, 4. So, this should be 24 LEDs. One minute, like this. So, we will not do anything in setup now, because we have already defined our global variables here. So instead we go directly into the loop and I will, since this is only for testing, I will define a static uint8 variable i, which will be our running index through this field of, or this array of uh, connections. And uh, now I want to switch on the first LED. So in order to do that, I need to know where the anode and the cathode is. So I have to go from here to the Arduino pin with a double index. So let's define two variables. uint8 type anode and cathode. Where I get the cathode as 
the pins. And what index do I have to put into the pins? I have to put the LEDs with index I. LEDs I. And second index zero, which gives me the cathode. But now I get a number like a six here for the first. And my array here runs from 0 to 5. So what I have to do is that I actually, well actually I've, I see one thing, um, this array is in the wrong direction because I connected them in the other direction. So it actually is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 and 2. So pin six is connected to Arduino pin number two. But the six position here has only index number one. So what I have to do is I just have to subtract a minus one here inside the parenthesis or the bracket. And now I do a similar thing with the anode. The end node of the LED I want to switch on is located at the second position in this double indexed field and uh, that should be it. So now I have to switch them on as outputs. I'll switch to output. Sounds better. And this is done with pin mode where I take the cathode first and I make it an output and then I use pin mode on the anode as well and also make it an output. So now both of them are an output. Now the cathode should already be initialized as a zero, but I will still do it um, actively. Cost me a couple of CPU cycles, but what? Digital write cathode low. It should write anode high. High, I said. Whoops, caps lock. And now our oh, LED should be on. Let's keep it on for a certain amount of time. Let's say for 300 milliseconds. Should be okay. And uh, then we will get rid of everything in the opposite direction. Just so we first set both the well, actually, here the cathode is already long, we, we know it, but well, whatever. And switch off the two pins. Switch to input. And now we step up our counter and we make sure that our counter stays in the range of our field by modulo. Twenty-four on the counter, and uh, yes, with a little bit of luck. <laughs> Always need luck when programming. Um, let's see. Upload. I make 
this box a little bit bigger here so that we see what happens. It compiled. Uh, can't set com state for com 19. Um, uh huh. Okay. Ah! Okay. No second not recognized. Auto detected COM20, and yeah, it was a bad cable. And here we are. You missed the first moment, the first run through, but here we are going from LED to LED in a starry sequence. Looks quite nice. This is not an effect which I put on a camera. It's actually the objective of my camera up here, which is a bit dirty and gives us this nice star shape. So now you can see that I can control each and every single LED on this module through the six wires which we have here. So now how would I run them so that it appears to be simultaneous as on this example here? Well, we have to actually update them a couple of hundred times per second so that our, uh, our eyes and the camera don't see that they actually flicker. And we can just test how this looks if we are making everything a bit faster here in our loop instead of uh, delaying for 300 milliseconds, we just delay for 3 milliseconds, which should give every LED one or a three milliseconds of on time, it is actually even more flickery to the eye than it is to the camera. So three milliseconds is obviously not a good choice here. Uh, let's try instead um, one millisecond, three times faster. this would be one millisecond it looks a bit flickery on the screen and it also does still um, for my eye so let's go to 0 0.5 0 0.5 or 0.4 um, milliseconds compiling uploading and yeah, that would be possibly acceptable. You may notice that they got significantly dimmer now to the eye. Um, well, that's because they are only on for a certain amount of time and then switching to the next one. A small comment from the cutting board now. The uh, dimness of the LEDs is also partially caused by the Arduino taking up so much time for its own stuff in the background right now. That's why the LEDs are so dim. They're only on for 0 0.4 milliseconds, but then there's a long time before the next LED is switched on because we leave the loop and when we come back, a lot of time have pa has passed without the LEDs being on. This can be much nicer solved with interrupts where actually the LEDs never are off for a significant period of time. But it should be bright enough. And if not, I still have the option to actually reduce the series resistance to the individual pairs of LEDs to get more current through them in this short amount of time. Also the Arduino code um, here with the pin mode switching digital write, digital write and pin mode is not optimal 
um, we lose a lot of time by doing uh, this with these commands instead of using the direct access to the ports which would be much faster. So that's it for today.